how to write a book in 30 days what a title <laughs> wouldn't we all like to know how to do that uh, i have been writing books for many years and i say writing like this in what's it called inverted commas because the truth is even though i've just released my ninth book it's now available on amazon called self-confidence i have never written a book in my life. And I'm going to share with you how I've managed to write nine books in probably a decade, you know, maybe just over a decade, but, but it's around 10 years. So that's almost a book every year, you know, and most people, most people want to write a book and never do because they don't have the confidence, they don't have the support, they don't have the structure. Essentially, they don't know how to get it done. So this is a value video. I really want to share with you how easy it is to get a book out into the world. That's one of my books there, Spiritual Fitness, right? My latest one, Self-Confidence, is on Amazon right now. As of two weeks ago, that one was released in July last year. I forget, mid last year. Hey, Claire, lovely to see you. I'm streaming this across multiple platforms because I'm leveraging uh, the fact that I can do that right now and really want to max out my time and share this message as uh, wherever I can. Because like I said, I just know many people want to write a book. Hey, MJ, and once you've written a book, you want to write another one and you want to write another one. And maybe you want to end up like, you know, the spiritual teacher, Deepak Chopra, that's written like 82 books or something crazy like that. And, uh, and it really is a joyous experience getting a book out into the world. And it's super, super easy. I'm going to share with you how, how you can do it on your own, how easy it is. I'm going to share with you the exact steps for getting a book out into the world. I've shared it with some of my clients and the reason why, the only reason why, no, two reasons why I really want to share this message with you is because writing books has changed my life externally and internally. Let me start in reverse. Internally, it's changed me because when you write a book, it is actually very healing. It's very empowering. You realize how much you know. You realize how much uh, experience you have. You realize what your passions are when you read your book back or you have someone share your book or when you hear your book being talked about or you talk about your book in a podcast, etc. Uh, Mary Vic, I just see that you've popped up on Facebook, but I can't see any words with your comment. Apologies for that. Uh, and externally... I, how externally writing a book has changed my life and my business is that uh, I stopped using business cards maybe six, seven years ago because I just realized that people don't value business cards. They just don't. <laughs> I know because I don't value them. And every time I would, eh, hate the word network, but every time I would go out and connect with people and meet new people, people would always want to give me their business card because of where I was already in my career as a speaker, coach, athlete, etc. So I go home, I end up with about 5, 10, 15 business cards. And, uh, and then what I do, and maybe this is you too, right? Let me know whether you're watching this live or recorded, if this is you, you put it in a little pile on your desk or wherever, and you say, oh, I'll get back to this whenever. And then that day comes and you still don't do it. And you say, oh, no, I'll get back to it on this day. And the next thing you know, you chuck it into the drawer full of business cards, once again, not connecting with those people. I know that's not everyone, but that's me. And I just thought, if people are giving me their business cards, left, right, and center, and I'm not connecting with them, and I'm throwing those business cards away, it's an ineffective strategy, in my opinion. So I was like, what's a more effective strategy? And I learned this from my friend, Daniel Priestley. Check out Key Person of Influence or Dent Global, the company Dent Global. And uh, Daniel just started giving books to everyone. Like we're talking like a decade ago before I'd written a book. And I realized how smart this strategy was. Because you know 
Well, if you've ever received a book from anyone that you never even asked for, maybe a friend wrote a book or a family member, or you went to an event, someone gave you a book, you're more than likely going to keep that book, even if you never read it. I've still got some books that people have given me that I'm like, man, one day I'll read that book. But because it's a book, I don't want to throw it away. How rude of me. <laughs> anyway, that's what I'm thinking. And I realize, man, when, you, when I give someone a business card, I'm not giving them value. But when I give them a book, I'm always giving them value. And not just from a you know, strategic point of view, but I'm actually sharing with this person what I love. You know, if I've, if I've given you my book, whoops, Spiritual Fitness, or you've bought Spiritual Fitness, or you've got it from me in some way, and uh, if you go to my Instagram, if you go to the link in the bio, I do believe you can get this book, the digital version for free. I'd have to check with my team. Uh, but if you go to Instagram, there's a link and that takes you to a whole lot of links. What's it called? Like a, I can't remember. There's a name for it where you click a link and there's like, you get my YouTube channel, there's a download, everything. But I think you can get that book absolutely for free. And um, when you give people what you love, it's like, you're sharing your passion, your purpose with them and in a way that it doesn't really cost you anything and in a way that it doesn't cost them anything to get it. So years ago, I started carrying books around with me. And for years, I mean, if you know me, if you follow my journey, if you follow me on social media, you know I travel a lot. And I always have approximately five to ten books on me. Jules, lovely to see you. It's a link tree. Thank you so much. I have a link tree link in my Instagram and you can find uh, I'm 99% sure you can find a copy of my book there. So I just started giving people books. And when you write, when you write your own book, let's, let's forget about published books, right? As in like a publisher comes to you, they give you an advance. We're talking about getting books on Amazon, self-publishing, et cetera, hybrid publishing in a way that you write your own book. It's your choice, what you want to write on. You get on Amazon and then you buy your book back from Amazon at cost price or wholesale price, whatever the right word is. So this book, I think, sells for about 15 pounds, $15. Yeah, great to see you, Jules. And uh, I can buy it off Amazon. It's my book, so I go into my author account, and I can buy it for about three pounds, right? It's like $5. And for me, that's a much better business card, way better. And I take those books and I give it to people. I've, re I've visited people again later. I've seen my book on their shelf in their house or their apartment in different parts of the world. And I know they haven't read the book, but they're proud of ha having the book and they put it on their bookshelf in their house. So uh, not only has it, uh, has it been really good as a business card, but if you want to get new clients, if you want to acquire clients in anything that you do, you have to show and believe that you are an authority in what you speak about or what you do. And this is why most people don't write books because they say they want to write a book, but then all the self-limiting beliefs, the inner bullshit comes up and says, who are you to write a book? And, you know, oh, you don't have anything to say, blah, 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 blah. So they never finish it. You know, before I got my first book coach, my first book coach was actually uh, Daniel Priestley. And in a way, his father, Andrew Priestley, but we'll come to that in a minute or in a few minutes. And they showed me how to write a book. And it's so crazy easy. It's so crazy easy. And, and then I found a way to do it even easier. And I'm going to share that with you. So uh, let me move on. So uh, with client acquisition, it's amazing. Why? Because when you write a book, right, this says spiritual fitness. Spiritual fitness is a concept. It's about working on your spirit, strengthening your spirit so that you have more faith, you have more hope, you have more purpose, you have more passion, you can thrive more under pressure, you live, you live from your why, not from the how, trying to figure stuff out. You live from a place of everything is always working for me rather than, fit, uh, rather than against me. I love talking about this stuff and I believe I'm an authority in this space. And if you know me in any capacity you've worked with me, you know, I know about spiritual fitness, right? So I, that says I am an authority in this topic. So when I share it with people, it gives people permission to come close to me because it says this guy or this woman knows something about this. So, and by the way, it doesn't have to be a business book. It can be any kind of book. 
but I'm going to share with you how to do that. So uh, Claire says, this is a great idea. I'm listening whilst doing the tidying up in my shop basement. <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, I'm in a much better place than your shop basement. I'm currently looking out onto the ocean beyond the jungle. Uh, beautiful, beautiful Thailand. So how do you write a book in 30 days? First of all, I'm going to share a, a short tip, and then I'm going to share an expanded tip. Number one, the short tip is the structure of the book, and I'm going to reverse engineer it. So if you're watching this live, you might have to be writing down very fast, or if you're watching it on recording, or if you're watching the recorded version of this, then just press play and stop. So the theme of the book, right, the short share is number one, what's the desired outcome? Or what's the purpose of the book? So for example, spiritual fitness. Then reverse engineer. What do I want to talk about, about spiritual fitness? And then write down bullet points, everything that, that you think is a part of spiritual fitness. So if the desired outcome is to share a book on dot, 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 then write that at the top of a page for me, spiritual fitness, and then write down, right, what are all the bullet points that you would talk, want to talk about? So for me, it's uh, surrounding yourself with the right people, taking responsibility for everything, choosing positive meanings for everything in your life, focus on what you can control what you, what, rather than what you can't control, have empowering habits and rituals that you live by every day, do something to move forward in fitness every day because everything is energy. Take care of your nutrition, your well-being, breathe, meditate, etc. Now you're going to come, you want to have, let's say, and once again, I'm not an expert in this, guys. I'm just sharing with you what has worked for me having written nine books, which four of those, of which four of those you can find on Amazon, right? The other, no, five, five of my books, Best Life, How to Earn Your Life, uh, 77 ways to reshape your life, spiritual fitness, and now self-confidence. And then I've written another four books that were p two PDFs and two were just done through a printer. I did a document, sent it to a printer, and then they would send me boxes of books that I would give out, but I've now upgraded to Amazon. So this is what's worked for me. You want to come up with about nine to nine to 15, right? Not too many, but these become your chapters. And then under each bullet point, you write a summary, a paragraph. So for example, I know the name of my book, Spiritual Fitness. And you don't have to think about the name. Just think of the theme of the book. What's the desired outcome? You can choose the name later. A lot of times, once I've finished the book, I've then decided the name only after the book has been written. I say it like this because I will explain with you. But what's the desired outcome? I want to write a book on spiritual fitness, right? What are the bullet points that I want to talk about, right? The main things in two or three words or even one word. Then once you come up with, let's say, around 10 main bullet points, these become your chapters. And then if I say, right, the first bullet point is responsibility. Then I say, okay, uh, what do I want to teach people about taking personal responsibility? Well, if you play the blame game, or if you play that radio station that no one should ever play called Blame FM and you blame others for where you are and how your life is, you'll never, ever change. If you're to change your life, you must change. You must act responsibly. You must hold yourself accountable for where you are and day by day start making changes. And if you get it wrong, start again the next day and keep holding yourself responsible for how you think, how you feel, the actions that you take, the results that you get. Boom. Done. It doesn't have to be a super long book. But just that is enough. Just what I just spoke, doing that 12 times with 12 bullet points, you're going to have 30, 40, maybe even 50 pages, right? Which is like a thin book. Let's see if I have a, I don't really have a thin book here, but even if you just spoke that much, 12 times, you probably have a book maybe that thick, right? That's still better than no book at all. My first ever book was and actually, let me go back. I spoke about this course, Key Person of Influence, with a company called Dent Global with my friend Daniel Priestley. And many, many people have gone through this program. It is the best business accelerator program that exists in the world. I used the tools that they shared in this program, and I became a successful fitness coach, then life coach, then performance coach, 
and I'm still using their same principles as well as many other things from many other coaches, teachers, mentors, blah, 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 advisors, but it's called the five P's. Go check it out. Key person of influence, Dent Global, and research Daniel Priestley and read all of his books because they're fucking amazing. And, uh, and I use those things to write my books. But a lot of people that have gone through that same program still haven't written books because sometimes people make it harder than it needs to be. And I'm telling you now, without any exaggeration, absolute truth, my first ever book was, I wish I had an A4 page here, but imagine this. Imagine this is a full A4 page, right? So from from this side of the book to the other side of the book, it's, it's, it's an A4 page. So this is two A4 pages, right? Folded in half, that makes eight pages. That was my first book. Eight pages, it was called The Five Biggest Fat Loss Mistakes, and I sold shitloads of personal training as a result of having that book. The Five Biggest Fat Loss Mistakes. Let's see if I can still remember them. It was not doing functional training, not taking care of your diet, not supplementing. Uh, not doing high intensity interval training. And I can't remember what the other one was, but that was a long time ago. It was four, uh, two A4 pages in half with a cover, a back cover. So essentially inside six pages. Couldn't it be more than 2000 words, which you could write in two hours, right? Anyone can, well, you could write a thousand words in an hour. So, so that's how you write a book. Well, there's more to it, but that is the basic structure if you want to write any book. And it is the basic structure for me, not, um, Claire says, probably not drinking enough water. Yeah, that was under the, I think that was under nutrition, but 100%. If you do not drink, let's go off on a side note. If you do not drink enough water, you will never, ever thrive. Because 70 to 80% of your body is made of water. 70 to 80 percent of your body if not all of your body requires water as its fuel without water you cannot thrive in dehydration definitely you cannot thrive and that's why every day i drink shit loads of water and every morning i start my day with a minimum of 500 mil sometimes even a liter of water uh claire says i have to admit there's no daylight uh, Scott Kaiser, nice to see you, man. As Daniel Priestley says, when you write a book, you are not only becoming an author, you are becoming an authority on your topic. Authority. I don't know how long you've been here, Scott, but absolutely, guys, that's what I was saying. When you have the courage, when you have the guts, when you have the whatever it takes you to get your book out into the world, even if it's eight pages, it says, I know my shit in this area. So I was a personal trainer in London. Before I did this whole process of uh, what I call the what we what they call the KPI process. Once again, third plug, key person of influence. Check it out. Dentglobal.com. Check it out. Daniel Priestley. Check him out. Scott Kaiser, who's watching this through LinkedIn, he's actually a student as well as me and an author as well as me. Uh, go check it out. But uh, uh, in this structure, I forgot what I was talking about now. In the structure, they talk about you, you becoming an authority in your space. And so many people didn't get it that they needed to go and make themselves an authority. Otherwise, no one would believe them. And when I got into this course, I was selling personal training in the UK between 50 and 60 pounds an hour, which was the going rate. It's what everyone else was charging. And if you do what everyone else does, you can charge what everyone else charges. So that was it. I was at the top of my game. I was working 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And Daniel was like, JP, there's a better way. And I went and did his course. And then I learned how to write a book. And so many people made it harder than, would need, than it needed to be because they wanted to write a bestseller. They wanted 34,000 words. They wanted 159 pages. I was like, fuck that. Eight pages. Let's go. And I went from charging 50 pounds an hour to and, and doing hourly sessions to writing a eight page or six page book, two just over 2000 words called the five biggest fat loss mistakes. And I started selling a result. And I went from charging 50 pounds an hour to charging 2000 pounds for three months, which back then sounded 
crazy. And literally today, okay, over a decade later, I'm that 10 times, but that sounded crazy for me. But because I would give people the book and I would say, hey, these are the biggest mistakes people make in fat loss, they believed me and they came and worked with me. And I had an amazing career as a personal trainer until I realized very quickly after three years of maxing out and charging really good money, I was like, man, I can do more than this. I know that transformation lies in psychology. And that's all I've done ever since. I moved from what I call the basement to the boardroom. And I started working with executives and, and in leadership because I knew that for us to have a better world, we need to create a better inner world. And when we do the inner work we, and we do inner leadership and self-leadership, we go out and lead the world better. And I just knew, man, this is my thing. And that's why I've written books on uh, spiritual fitness. That's why I've written books on habits, on, on health, on mindset, inspirational stories. And my last book, once again, one and a half weeks ago, now, was, now on Amazon. I don't even have a physical copy yet because I'm traveling, but it's called Self-Confidence. A uh, few people have said about it uh, uh, on LinkedIn and stuff that they've read it. They've said it's amazing. So uh, I really hope that you enjoy it. Scott says, sorry, just got you. No worries. Jules, you're such an action taker. Thank you so much. Okay, I definitely am. That's what makes me different. There's a lot of things that make me different. My weird accent, my tattoos, my, uh, my weird habits, the way I live my life. And there's a lot that makes me different. But one thing that makes me different to most people, and I say most people, not makes me different to everyone. I don't want to say that I'm better than you or you're worse. I want you to understand that you can come on this side of the fence too. What makes me different to most people and why I don't have what most people have, 70, 80% of the world hate what they do, by the way, and hate their life or dislike their life. The reason why I don't is because I take massive, massive action. So here is the big tip that I want to share with you that was an absolute game changer for me. I've already shared with you why you should write a book. I've already shared with you how to write a book, a very basic structure. But now I'm going to share with you how I have in around 10 years written nine books. No, that's not true. I have released nine books. I actually wrote another book, which is just sitting, finished, completely uh, edited, edited by a professional editor. It's sitting on my laptop. I just haven't found the right time to release it. So I've written 10 books in 10 years, and I got a D in high school, as in an overall number. I was not smart. I'm extremely dyslexic. I don't generally read out loud in front of people because when I did that at school, people would always laugh at me. I read very slowly. For that reason, I listen to audiobooks. This is how I expand my knowledge. This is how I self-educate through audio because I'm not good at writing. I'm not good at reading. When I, when I realized when I was late 20s and someone came into the gym, my friend Daniel, and said, JP, there's a better way. You need to know how to write books and build products and build a profile online. And he's like, you have to get a book out. You have to get a book out. You have to be an authority in your space. And I was like, you know, personal trainers in London where I was living at the time, what's that saying? A dime a dozen, right? Tons of personal trainers. I was like, man, I've got to get this book out. But I was struggling. So I did this, this short ebook, Five Biggest Fat Loss Mistakes. And then I was like, right, now I need a proper book. Right? This has already got me clients, an eight-page eight book or two A4 pages br broken in half and printed at, uh, what's it called? Call Quick or something like that, a, a printing place in London. Super cheap, super simple. I was like, man, if this is getting me new clients at a new rate, I'm charging a new fee. I have uh, more authority. I have a better profile. It's like, I've got to write my next book. So my next book was going to be called 77 Ways to Reshape Your Life. I'm sure you can find, I, I, uh, I've changed so much since writing that book, uh, including being vegan for the last six and a half years when I encourage people to eat animal protein in that book. The difference is I'm still telling people to eat protein, but back then it was animal protein. But I'm sure you can still find it somewhere online. Someone actually told me once they found it on Amazon and it was available one copy for 250 pounds. So <laughs> it's not that good, but uh, that's interesting that someone's willing to sell it for that amount. And um, I, was, I wanted to write this book, but I knew it needed to be a thick book. And I kept struggling and struggling and struggling and delaying and procrastinating. And then one day it hit me. 
I fucking love speaking. I love speaking. Now we're talking like I'm 28, 29, maybe. And I basically went to one of my friends who was, uh, who had gone to university, even though they were English, they had studied English in university. What would you call that? Like, uh, I can't remember, but uh, I can't think of the word either. But they actually went to university to study English. So they were like very well spoken. They were like very well spoken. And, uh, and I said, look, I'd like to do something with you. I'd like to pay you for your time. Can I talk my book to you? And can you type it out for me, right? Old school, super simple. I'm literally in her kitchen walking up and down the kitchen, which is two meters that way, two meters that way. And I'm in my head, I'm in my heart, I'm thinking about what I want to share. And by the way, same structure. It was a book on how to change your life. That was the goal. What topics? Remember the bullet points I wanted to share? It was what topics? I did three main topics. Well, if you're going to change your life, you have to look at your body. You have to look at your nutrition and you have to look at your mindset. And then I was like, right, what about the body? And I wrote five or six bullet points. What about mindset? Da, 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 da. What about nutrition? Da, da, da. And then those became my chapters. And I did one chapter at a time. So she was like, right, okay, next we've got move every day. So I was like, right, da, 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 da. talking in a kitchen while she's typing. Now, it took a little bit longer than it should have, two weeks. Empty document to finished book, two weeks. Two weeks of sitting with her for, okay, one to two hours. Uh, Jules, English literature? Yeah, maybe. I think that. Claire says literature. Yeah, there you go. It must be that. Jules, uh, I have that book. I'm also vegan now. <laughs> you have 77 ways to reshape your life. Well, you've been around with me for, uh, for a long time. Or well, I've known you for a long time anyway. Uh, that's super cool that you've got it because it's a limited edition. It's not available anymore. So keep on, uh, keep hold of it. Uh, so, um, so same structure. I used the same structure, but I spoke it. Now, here's the, uh, the kicker, right? Every single book I've written, once again, quote unquote, since that day, I've never written one word. I've spoken every word. That's not 100% true because I've gone back and done the edit. But every single book that I've ever done since then has been a talk. My book called Ordinary to Extraordinary, The Principles of Peak Performance. Sorry, guys, I keep being distracted by this, the sunset here. It's gorgeous. Uh, Ordinary to Extraordinary, The Principles of Peak Performance. I spoke to someone that typed it up. We then sent it to an editor. We then sent it to a printer. Super easy. That was my next book. Next book, what are we on now? Number four, The Extraordinary CEO, How to Win at Business and in Life. It was a talk I did for the beauty industry in London at the XL. I put a mic on me and I spoke. And I took that recording. I had it transcribed. Notice I'm making it even easier. Had it transcribed, sent the transcription to an editor, sent it to a printer. The printer designed the cover for about 70 pounds, 100 US dollars. And then I ordered... Uh, a test book. Yeah. I thought the cover was a bit thick, sent it back, changed it, silky cover, thinner. Uh, we expanded the text to make the book a little bit thicker. Cause it, if you've got that, if you've got that book, uh, ordinary, um, the extraordinary CEO, how to win a business and life. And the other one before ordinary to extraordinary, the principles of peak performance, which was, which uh, was about 10 non-negotiable habits that I had in my life to thrive every day energetically. And I share that in that book because habits are everything. We are our habits. We are a result of our habits. Uh, but it's a thin book. Anyway, got that out. Then uh, what was the next book after that? It was How to Own Your Life. It was a talk. A friend of mine did some work with me. He put a mic on me. We did a talk. I think it was in Guildford, England. And he mic'd me up and I did a talk called How to Own Your Life. And we put that into a book and it's been one of my best selling books. It's on Amazon. It's about taking charge of your life. I have done talks on that book. No, forgive me. It was not Guildford. It was, I have to give respect to them. It was at the Yes Group in London, a personal development forum, a personal de development community that have, uh, I guess, like chapters in different places, but they hosted me three times at the Yes Group in London. I was their speaker for the month. 
and it was a talk I did for the Yes Group. Took my talk, recorded it, uh, sent it to an editor. Still to this day, go into Amazon and you will find the book there. It was just an, a, a one hour talk. A one hour talk, just pressing record on my phone, having it in my, in my jacket pocket, taking that recording, sending it to an editor, paying a couple of hundred quid to edit it into what I call book language, and then sending that off to print. But here was the upgrade. Now I learned about Amazon and that you can actually submit your own book into Amazon. So we put it onto Amazon and Amazon does everything. I don't send it out. If I want to order my own copies, I can for about three pound and it's always available. And every, I think it's like every three months, I get a tiny check from Amazon for the books that are being sold. But I'll be, on, be, I'll be completely honest with you. I don't give a shit about it. I'm, I'm writing the book to give value to people. People that can't afford coaching or geographically can't come and work with me. They can just go and get the book. I can send people, friends, people in need. Uh, you can send one of your friends, you know, the, the, the PDF or the ebook, et cetera. And it's just been such an amazing experience. And I will write books for the rest of my life. Uh, and still book after book after book. I keep getting more gratitude. I keep giving more value. I keep serving more. I keep learning more about myself. And it's just such an amazing process. And like I said in the beginning of this video, hang on, uh, Claire, nice. Claire says that inspired me as I'm away in Greece for three weeks in July and intended to use the time. I'll write a book. Amazing. Commit to that. Claire, you're in my mastermind. When we, are you, I hope you're going to be on the call this afternoon. Make that a declaration. When we meet for the Live 100 call later today, make that a declaration to the group that when we meet next month, that you will have your book finished. Please, please, please. Uh, and remind me to hold you to that when we speak in like two, three hours. Scott, spot on JP, speaking your book is not only easier, it also helps you to write more conversationally with results in more authentic writing. Spot on. Absolutely spot on. So my latest book, Self-Confidence, which is for people in leadership positions who want to be in leadership positions, right? Because being a leader requires you to be able to perform under pressure. So this book is not inspirational story. It's not about how I went through a life-changing accident and the tools I used to get through my recovery. This book, Self-Confidence on Amazon, is about psychological skills for performing at your best, tapping into your full potential, and to be able to thrive under pressure. And I teach lots of psych skills, mental skills in this book. It's uh, brilliant. But once again, I did a talk in January this year, 2022, in Malta with my friend Susan Routledge and lots of amazing people. And I just did a talk. And I did that talk and I had it transcribed and my book coach, which where we'll close right now, which is where we'll close right now. And my book coach put it on Amazon for me with me doing very, very little other than the talk and then editing it at the end and making sure everything sounded perfect. I did nothing else. And you can now go find that book on Amazon and someone just, it's only been alive for about a week. Someone bought one, sent me a picture of them with a physical copy, a copy because they were so grateful, did a LinkedIn post, put me on their podcast, shared all the things they learned in the book. It's really, really good. Now, here's the last thing I want to share with you to make it even easier for you. And then there's two intentions, no, three intentions for me sharing this with you. I want you to write a book. I want you to have more authority. I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to have more pride. I want you to believe more in what you do. That's the number one intention. Number two is I know how much a book has helped me. So if you feel there is a book inside you, I wanted to make it as easy as possible for you to get out of your own way and to share how easy it is to write a book. And then number three, the number one intention for me sharing this video with you is... There's been many books, many. There's been a few of my books that I would have never got out because I didn't have the right support at the right time. But when I met over a decade ago, Daniel Priestley, and I'm going to do a final plug for them, the Key Person of Influence program, 
Dent Global is the company and Daniel Priestley is the author. When I did that program, I was, always, I was also introduced to Daniel's father, Andrew Priestley. And Andrew Priestley, over a decade, has become a great friend of mine. I've done business coaching with him. He is a life mentor of mine. I always try not to get emotional when I say this. He's become like a father figure to me because I didn't really have a supportive, inspirational uh, father figure that you know was pushing me to go after my goals and and you know when I wasn't believing myself, challenging me to say, "Hey, man, come on, man, <laughs> you can do better than this," etc. And I'm really, really grateful for him uh, and for having him in my life over the last decade. And Andrew actually is a book coach. So a lot of my clients have actually gone to Andrew and he's taken them through this process and he has actually helped them speak the book. And then Andrew goes and does the rest. He puts it on Amazon for them. He has helped hundreds of people become authors. He has helped many people become best-selling authors on Amazon because he actually has a strategic plan for how you can release your book on day one, make it very cheap. It tells you, you know, it gives you all the marketing tools and everything so you can put it out to your audience. And if your clients, your customers, your family, whatever, all go buy that book in one day, it makes you a bestseller in Amazon. You screenshot that. You can make your book then called a best-selling book. I mean, he just knows a lot about this stuff. He's done it for many people. Uh, and I really wanted to give Andrew a shout out. He doesn't know that I'm doing this video. I'm streaming this across Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Hopefully he sees this video, but I definitely, when I'm done with this video, I will, over the next couple of days, I will go and uh, tag Andrew Priestley. But uh, I'm sure you can just type in the words Andrew Priestley into, into Google and you'll find him. Uh, and he's just really, really an amazing man. He has this last book, self-confidence would never have happened without Andrew. Why? Because I've just been uh, going through lots of challenges. And the book, in the book, Self-Confidence, I talk about the difference between challenge and threat. Right? This is a psychological skill. Understanding that we perceive whether stresses on our life are either threats or challenges, or challenges, sorry, or, th or threats or challenges over here. And it comes down to our inner resources, our inner external resources. Anyway, so I've not had threats to my life. Understand that when I say challenges, I mean shit I've got to go through, right? Not shit that's happening to me. Oh, I've got challenges, right? I just know I have the resources. I've spent all of my life accumulating in internal and external resources, but I've had challenges. So I've just thought I don't have the time. I don't have the time to write a book. So what Andrew did was he reached out to me and he said, look, why don't I put you through my, my book process like we did for spiritual fitness? And I said, oh, Andrew, uh, I don't really have the time. And he said, JP, remember, there is nothing for you to do. All I need is the recording. That is it. And at the end, I'll send you the document and you do me an edit. And when I read it back about one month ago, I think I was on a flight to Dubai. And I read back and I was just like, man, I am so grateful for speaking what I believe in and what I want to share with people. And I'm so grateful that I was able to take those words and put it into a written format because some people prefer to read. And lastly, I was so grateful for the fact that I could leverage my relationship with Andrew Priestley to be able to hop onto his book, book release program, whatever you want to call it to get my next book out. It really is that simple. So if you feel that you have a book in you, I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm here to encourage you to get it out of you. One people, one, <laughs> one person that has inspired me in my life out of a lot of people is a spiritual teacher called Wayne Dyer. Wayne Dyer passed away a few years ago, but he wrote many, many, many books. And one of my favorite quotes, my favorite book ever from Wayne Dyer was called The Power of Intention or The Secrets of the Power of Intention. And what it was about was the fact that we intend everything, that if we hide away from life, then we will get things in alignment with hiding away. If we put ourselves into life, if we get give everything in life, we will get everything back, et cetera, et cetera. And anyway, very powerful um, 
a very powerful a book. But one of my favorite quotes from Wayne Dyer is this, and write it down because this is life-changing shit. Don't die with your music still inside you. Oh, man. That quote for me, when I first heard that, don't die with your music still inside you, that resonated with me so much because I've always had so much to say. I've always had so much passion, so much energy. And that is what gets me to write book after book after book after book. As soon as I find something new that I know is powerful, transformational, that can help people reinvent themselves, reset their life, etc., I'm like, man, this is my music. I want to go and share this. So if you feel that you have music inside you, get it out because it's not for you. Writing a book partially is for you, but it's mostly for the people that read your book because you never know. It doesn't matter if it's a children's book. It doesn't matter if it's a strategic business or leadership book. It doesn't matter if it's an inspirational story of overcoming adversity. If it reaches one person and it impacts their life for the better, isn't it worth doing? Anyway, lastly, this is what I teach, self-confidence, spiritual fitness, mind mastery. Uh, I now run, as a result of my new team member, Marika Becker, I now run a free coaching every Monday, 8 a.m. UK time. It's on Zoom. I'll attach the link after this video. Go on my social media. You'll see us mention it a couple of times over the next few days. Well, you'll probably see us mention it every week because it's now a weekly thing that I do. Uh, it's uh, going into 2022. I decided that after retracting and retreating from a lot of things that I was doing, I was missing regular connection with people, uh, being able to give people the opportunity to ask me questions, be coached by me, etc. So every 8 a.m., every Monday, UK time. Currently, that's BST, British Summertime. And now I'm doing a free Zoom coaching where I get to see you, you get to see me. I'll add the link after I've stopped going live and doing this broadcast, but that's it. Just really wanted to share that with you. I really hope that if you do have music inside you, if you feel that you have something to say, something to share, maybe for the benefit of yourself or for others or both, then I hope that next time I hear from you, you have a book in your hand, even if it is a print off of a PDF. Don't make it bigger than it needs to be. Remember, my ninth book is a best-selling book without me trying on Amazon, without me doing anything, just releasing it to my audience. My first book was two A4 pages, folded in half. So inwards, onwards, and upwards. I trust you got value from this. And I look forward to, to seeing whatever your next book or your first book is going to be. Peace.